Let's have a look at this question on electric fields and geometry from the G advanced and it involves two point charges. One of them is placed at the origin, the other one a coordinate of two zero. Together they form an equipotential circle of radius R. What we need to find out is the radius of the circle and the point at which it is centered. Now because the circle is equipotential, if we were to pick any point on it, the resultant potential from both charges will be equal to zero. What is the distance from this point to the first charge? Well, if we think about it, there's going to be a distance here and that will have its x coordinate, let's call it x in general, which will be just this distance across here. We we'll also have a y coordinate, which we could call y in general. The distance, let's call it d1, will just be equal to the square root of x squared plus y square. The distance to the second charge can be found in a very similar way. The only difference is that the x coordinate will now be equal to the distance x take away 2. So this will be equal to x minus 2 squared plus y squared. Because this is an equipotential surface, we can add up the individual potentials from this charge and from this charge and they will equal zero. So the potential from the first charge will be equal to some constant multiplied by negative q divided by the distance which will just be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. The potential from the second charge will just be equal to plus the same constant k multiplied by q over root 3 because the charge is q over root 3 and then the distance will just be equal to the square root of x minus 2 squared plus y squared. When added up, the charges should equal to zero. Now I can do one of my favorite things, that to be canceling things out of equations. So k and q can go. We can also move this to this side of the equation. What we'll get is that one over root three multiplied by x minus 2 squared plus y squared will be equal to 1 over the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now let's do some cross multiplication. So this times this will equal this times this. In other words, we're going to have the square root of x squared plus y squared will be equal to root 3 times, let's put some brackets here not to get confused, x minus 2 squared plus y squared squared. We can also square all of the terms in the equation and we could magically make those square roots disappear. Now we're ready to expand this. So what we're going to get is that x squared plus y squared will be equal to 3 multiplied by x minus 2. So it's going to give us x squared minus 4x plus 4 and then we're going to have plus y squared like so. So we're going to have x squared plus y squared is equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 plus 3y squared. Now let's bring everything to one side. So we're going to get 3x minus 3x squared minus x squared, which will just give us 2 x squared and then minus 12 x plus plus 12 plus 3 y squared minus y squared will just give us 2 y squared is equal to 0. Now let's divide both sides by 2 which will just leave us with x squared minus 6 x plus 6 plus y squared is equal to 0. 
Now this is already suspiciously starting to look like the equation of a circle and we're already getting somewhere. Maybe we could factorize this term into x minus 3 squared. Now all we would need is a 9 here. So we can just add that in and take it away. So what we would get is that x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 6 plus y squared. We've added a 9, so when you take away a 9, will be equal to 0. This term here will be equal to x minus 3 squared. Then plus 6 minus 9 will give us minus 3 plus y squared is equal to 0, meaning that x minus 3 squared plus y squared is equal to 3. And this right here is actually the equation of a circle of radius root 3 that is centered at the point x is equal to 3, y is equal to 0. The GE Advance has some of the most interesting problems that I've encountered and you need to have a look at this problem on rotational physics and this video is just over here.